You're with BAM's Global Scene Amsterdam. In the last episode, we explored the music that comes from the city. Now we turn our attention to the state of the industry and the communities that artists create to get their music to the fans. The international music industry uh, stopped having labels in Holland. So the big international labels like EMI, Warner, they don't have any Dutch label anymore. So that basically also gave possibilities for Dutch people to start small record companies to bring the music from Holland out there. I run a small record label called Non Records. I just basically wanted to give voice to uh, my friends making music, myself making music. Docs Records is a, a, is a record company that's run by a few friends of mine that I've known for over 25 years and they decided to start a record company and a booking office uh, and a sort of like a press agency um, for their friends and for people that they thought would uh, could do with a, uh, a little help and a little support. The Amsterdam Songwriters Guild is a group of singer-songwriters, musicians, um, who get together every Tuesday still. I would say the reasons for the Amsterdam Songwriters Guild to be there is um, to create a platform for songwriters to communicate with each other, to have a, a sort of a social group that you can belong to and yet that you feel that you are part of a scene that makes you stronger inside and also you can use it for promotion. I think they're, they're very open. It's definitely not a guild. You know, by the meaning of the word, it's not really a sect or something that's very secret. They're, they're quite open uh, and welcoming and enthusiastic about what they're doing. I really believe there's a big community in Amsterdam for uh, both audiences and uh, bands because what I what I see pretty much is that you go to uh, band A playing live and you see uh, people from band B uh, checking them out and otherwise and uh, I think it's a it's a competitive scene but there are also lots of lots of people really support each other and check out each other and try to uh, to get together and make this happen. One of the main things that um, I needed in my personal life, as far as uh, my music is concerned and my records, is to actually be able to trust someone, to trust people and to know that if they're going to screw up, they're my mates, you know, my friends, and I, I can say things to them that will and it will be okay in a, in a couple of weeks, you know. Yeah, and I, I really love the interaction nowadays in Holland because with Twitter or Facebook, it's so much easier to still in contact, to be in contact with everyone. But also at the festivals, you see uh, bands drinking beers with labels, labels are drinking beers with the radio, with journalists. It's, it's, it's not working on islands anymore. It's one big family and I think it's also a new gen uh, generation of young people that know each other and, 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 and like each other and um, when you have to work you have to work but after work you can drink a beer and see each other and um, get in contact with new people. I don't think bands need major labels that uh, more as they used to because uh, with the internet and with uh, mailing lists, MP3s, Twitter, you can uh, contact with your fan base really easily. And the, the thing with big labels, with a guy with a big tuxedo on after, after his desk, I think it's a little outdated. So the things they call advice, I'm a very clever kid, you must admit I do not fit. In all your systems, bedrooms, kitchens, I still dance on every love song that is honest and naive. such a different dynamic. The, the old group of people uh, that have uh, 
power of the whole industry has lost touch with this whole new dynamic of people just going through Twitter. Can you perform a concert here and here? Yes, I can. How much do you want? I'll put it in your direct message. Seize the amount, it's okay. And that's it. You don't need to, uh, to work uh, for years to make it, to slowly build it up. If you're good, you can uh, go from, from zero to 100 in a, in a few minutes, so to say. Well, I think the relationship be between the bands and the audience improves because of social media, not only because you feel more connected with the band, but also because uh, when you're in a band, you're much more uh, visible. Every time you post a status update on Facebook or you post a tweet, you pop in someone's uh, environment. And the thing in mind that the audience thinks about the band every now and then and you just stay on the op of lockte. Of course, you're communicating in a massive way. Like I have almost 2,000 followers. So if I put out a tweet, with a bit of luck, a thousand are reading them. But then if they react, I react. So it has become far more hard labor for bands than for 10 years ago. I do believe that a lot of Amsterdam underground bands don't uh, use the social media like they uh, maybe should. There's a lot more in it and from, from time to time you see a band which, which I think, oh, it's really cool and then you check out if they have Twitter and they do, but they only post something once a week and it's really weird and, 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 and just a little bit of information. Well, we, we, we dealt with all the, all the changes in the music industry by uh, going with the flow. I mean, it sounds like a cliche, but I mean, we use the internet like everyone uses the internet, I'd say. I mean, um, I still think there is a market for decent products. There is a market for decent CDs and there is a market for vinyl. So things are changing, but some old ways still persist. In the next episode, we will look at how artists are rolling with the change and taking control for themselves. Check it out at BAM.TV.